Joining us from Pepper on Sports, Jackie Pepper. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Fred. And from 710 ESPN, Jay Woodfin. Hello, Jay. What's up, man? All right, we're going to start with you. You love his enthusiasm, but is there reason to worry about Puig's mistakes? Jay. Listen, what concerns me more than Puig is the way that everybody else is talking about, oh, it's not a big deal. He's just Puig being Puig. We heard the stuff with, with uh, Manny Ramirez and Manny just being Manny, and you saw how that ultimately ended up. Yeah, but man, but but to be fair, Jay, Manny had been in baseball a long time, and that's what's but that's but that's what's more concerning about this is that those were those were behavior patterns that were that were built up over time and it still didn't work out for Manny who was a who would have been a Hall of Fame uh, baseball player. Puig is coming in as a rookie right now, halfway through the season. Well, not really halfway, but through the season he comes in. He's a raw talent. He doesn't know how to handle the media. He doesn't even really know how to handle this town. Let, let's look at it purely. He came from Cuba. He was a defector from Cuba, right. dropped in the major leagues, yep. dropped in one of the most recognizable teams in sports in the major leagues. Yep. And now we're telling him he's the face of this franchise. That's way too much for a guy this young, All right. this raw, this soon. Jackie, what do you think about that? Uh, I can't believe, Jay, that you're comparing him to Manny Ramirez. It's extremely insulting and pretty much sacrilegious. But here's what I'm worried about. It's not the X's and O's. Puig has time to get that in check. My mom, about a month ago, said to me, I'm really worried that Puig is going to let the fame get to him. What can the Dodgers do to protect him, not only from the media, but to protect Puig from himself? So I made a few calls to different front office members around various leagues, and the best advice I got came from an NHL front office member. He said in hockey, a lot of our young rookies, the 18, 19 year olds, they move in with veterans on their team and learn from them. Yeah. Yeah, Sidney Crosby lived with Mario Lemieux. But I Jackie, wanna put look. Puig, wait, Jay. I want to put Puig with Mark McGuire. He's a family man. He's been to hell and back. He's had the fame. Let him learn some lessons, life lessons from his coach. And, you know, he's the hitting coach. But so first, that of all, help too. first of all, you Jay, have we got to, 15 seconds. First of all, you have to, you have to, um, if you're Puig, you have to let this come in. He's had people that have tried to get with him. You know, uh, Uribe, uh, Gonzalez, these guys have tried to get, Hanley Ramirez have tried to get with him. It's up to him to allow them to come in and mentor him in this transition. He's not accepting it. It could cost him in the long run. Uh, you know what I think? Right. I think he's a kid. I think he has an awful lot of ability, and I actually think he's going to get He'll it. He'll be all right. And for Dodger Even fans, time. he needs to get it. From the overachievers to the underachievers, when something goes wrong, whether it's fair or not, people play the blame game. A lot has gone wrong for the Angels, so who gets the blame? It has been a disastrous season and at times painful to watch. You first point the finger at Mike Sosha because the easiest thing to change is the manager. You can make the argument that Mike has been there so long, the players no longer want to hear his voice. I would make the argument Sosha is one of the best managers in the game. He has won a World Series. If the Angels made a change, he'd be out of work about five minutes. You could point the finger at that man, General Manager Jerry Depoto. When he came in, he was a man with a plan. He was going to change the culture and reconstruct the front office staff. Perhaps he should have been concerned about reconstructing the pitching staff. To be fair, DePoto has failed. Anyone want to blame Artie Moreno? When he bought the club, he restored the fans' faith in the Angels, lowered beer prices, walked the concourse meeting people. He's taken some big swings, Albert Pujols and Josh Hamilton. Best case, those have been whiffs. What has gone so wrong for the Angels, Jackie? Fred, the Angels have the sixth worst record in all of Major League Baseball. So what hasn't gone wrong with these guys? But let's start with the pitching staff since you mentioned that. They, you know, the Angels were known for their great pitching staff the last few years. It has just not panned out. They have the second to worst ERA. Only team worse are the Houston Astros. That is downright embarrassing. And that's not even considering Pujols and Hamilton being absolute busts. But here's where it's going to hurt them the most. If Pujols and Hamilton do not get it together in 2014, Mike Trout will be eligible for arbitration. And those two contracts will suck the life out of the Angels and they won't be able to afford to keep Trout. That will be bad. A lot of people talking about that deal that Albert Pujols signed. And when you make decisions like that, and if it doesn't work out, Jay, does it affect the credibility of the franchise? Of course, and this is where you have uh, the cultures of franchises really being uh, under the, put under the microscope. You look at St. Louis, who really kind of used Albert Pujols for, uh, for a couple of World Series. I think they paid him around $100 million total. They got the best for their money out of this guy. And then you got the Angels, who made a prime mistake. It's an example of just how immature their franchise really is from top to bottom. To give this guy the amount of money that they gave him for the amount of years that they gave it to him, if you couldn't see this was going to cripple with your franchise going forward, especially with a talent like Trout, you should not be in a front office anywhere, not alone, uh, let alone in, uh, in the Major League base, uh, Baseball, but not even All at right. McDonald's. All right, well, then who goes? Who goes? Do you get rid of Sosha? Do you get rid of DePoto? 
Artem Moreno is not going to fire himself. Jay, who goes? Depoto goes for his ineptitude, and so she goes simply because his voice is tied in that locker room. Jackie, you saw who goes? Artie Moreno bragged in GQ magazine about how bringing Albert Pujols was his personal decision, how he put in the phone calls. This owner looked at Pujols as a marketing ploy and as a tool to get fans in the seat. He did not consider who the best player would be to fit into that team. Obviously, they, the owner ain't going anywhere. I think DePoto will go only because he's going to fall victim to the last in, first out corporate America rule. Tough, tough business. All right, and now... We go to the segment that is not for the faint of heart. It requires both speed and concentration, which I hope is not too much to ask of our guest tonight. It's time for Rapid Fire, presented by Ram. Guts, glory, Ram. All right, Jackie J, which one of you has the guts who seeks the glory, who will captivate and mesmerize us? That guy. You already know I'm down, don't you? <laughs> you already know. Patrick Reed won a PGA event last week, and his wife was the caddy. First time in 17 years a husband and wife team has won. Put two minutes on the clock. Let's do this. Is this a good idea, and would you want your significant other working with you, Jay? There is absolutely zero chance me and my wife will ever work together. The only person who's a bigger critic than she is of myself is myself. So she can either make me better at, at the job or at home. It but, can't be both. But given what you said, you shouldn't even work with yourself. Because you're a good critic. Right, Jackie, I have to go. tolerate myself. Jackie, go. My inner uh, optimist says, oh, my God, they're best friends. They're married. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the pessimist in me says Justine Reed is a genius. This is the best way to keep tabs on her man. No uh, way he has the time to Tiger Woods her with that oh, schedule. No oh, chance. No. She's so smart. She is Ouch, so smart. No. All right, then. Uh, all right, on the subject of golf, Academy Award nominated actor Samuel L. Jackson loves the sport. And he has it written into his contract that he's allowed to play twice a week while on location. Is it crazy? Or would you like this written into your contract, Jackie? If I'm an entertainment diva, I want puppies to play with on demand, satellite dish so I can watch all the sports packages, uh, authentic Mexican food, and a trainer to help me shed the pounds gained from said Mexican food. Puppies on demand, Jay. Absolutely. The only thing I need written in my contract are three Monster Energy drinks sitting <laughs> right beside me and a couple of big juicy steaks after the show. I'm, I'm ready to roll. The Lakers are going to wear white short sleeve jerseys a few times this season, including Christmas Day. Is that a good look for the Lakers, Jay? Come on, man. You got some of these dudes with the most scrawniest arms on the planet. You really want to lock those, constrict those into some tight uniform? I like the white jerseys always have. I'm not so sure that the juvenile City League short sleeve shirt look is in. I can't do it. Jack, pros. is it weird that I really liked them on the Golden State Warriors? Plus, I will not miss all that armpit action on TV. And for chubby armed folks like me, I will gladly spend my money on a replica jersey, NBA, making you happy. Stephon Marbury's, I'm, I'm Stephon, uh, Steph Curry's is, uh, uh, arms is, uh, is enough to, to ward those off for me for life. Aww. All right, all right, all right, now let's go. We got one more. Let's get this. If I say pole dancing, you may grab a wad of money, settle into a CD place, and get ready for the show. It's my wallet. But there's much more to it. The Sports Federation wants it to become an Olympic sport. We're short on time. Jay, yes or no? Absolutely. I mean, have you seen some of these pole dancers? Get down. Jackie. They are a perfect mix between gymnasts and acrobats. I wouldn't mind seeing ladies or gentlemen work that pole on the Olympic right. level. Bring it. That's right. And to our lady and our gentlemen this evening, Great job. Thanks for being here. Anytime. Thank you.